Hey guys, it is Heather with Jumping Spiders USA. Go ahead and find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash Jumping Spiders USA. And before we get started, give this video a like, a share, a comment. Let us know how you're doing. Let us know how them spiders are doing. Subscribe, click the little notification bell so you get notifications for all future content. So today we are going to be working with this Ding Dang Zilla micro habitat again. I will link down in the description um, a video that I made the other day, um, unboxing and a review of this enclosure. And I'm just gonna say it again, I do not love this enclosure. What I do like about this enclosure is that it is so readily available. Like if you look on Amazon, it just immediately comes up, you know, jumping spider enclosure, this thing comes right up. Um, it's like $18.99 plus tax, so it's about 20 bucks. And me in Durham, North Carolina, to get this, it, it was one day. It came the next day after, um, after I ordered it. So for 20 bucks, one day shipping, easily accessible. I could see, I can absolutely see why this is such a popular enclosure enclosure. I'm not going to go into all the reasons why I don't think it should be a popular enclosure, but I can absolutely see why it is just off the top of my head. I'm just going to say a couple of things, repeat a couple of things about this. Um, for the vast majority of jumping spiders, this enclosure is, um, not acceptable. It's got too many gaps, um, and if it's, um, if it's a sling, if it's a juvenile, if it's a smaller species of jumping spider, or if it's a gravid jumping spider, or if you're not sure if it could be a gravid jumping spider, all of these make this enclosure not good. Not to mention that some people say that over time, this plastic warps and it causes even more gaps in the plastic. Um, so if you are going to use this enclosure as is, it is only for large, mature jumping spiders. Something like a mature Regal, a mature Audax, you know, something that gets comparable size. That's really all this would be good for. And so today uh, we're going to make this enclosure even safer, um, make it even less likely for your spider to get out. And really all you're gonna need is you're gonna need some mesh and some scissors and some silicone. And so I've gone ahead and already, um, I've gone ahead and already cut out four, um, four, squares of the mesh that are that size and what we're going to do is we're just going to open it up and we're going to put two of these together we're going to double them up all right so we are going to take this silicone and put some all around the edges on the inside of the vent. Okay. And then take your two squares. And then just push them up against the silicone all around. And then we're just going to repeat that same thing, that same exact thing on the other side. So the other places where it has gaps is up here around this right here, up there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some more silicone and we're just going to put it in um, that corner right there. Just a glob. A 
right in there. Do that on the other side as well. Okay. I mean, it's not beautiful. You know, you're gonna see some um, silicone on there, but it's gonna close up those gaps and you'll want that to cure, you know, it's set for at least 24 hours. Um, I'd give it even longer than that before I would put any um, spiders in there. Uh, because it's gonna make a chemical smell. Yeah, so I'd give it at least two or three days before I put any spiders in there. And then we're not gonna do this, we're gonna have to do this in stages. The next part is um, the, there, when you put this part, when you put the door on it, you know, right here, down here, there's a gap. And what you're gonna have to do is make sure that, um, this part up here is pushed up as far as it will go and then after this dries i'm gonna put silicone around here to keep that right there and to minimize um the gap at the bottom but we're gonna have to wait until the rest of this is dry before we can do that so stay tuned Okay, so it has been a day and everything that we did at the beginning of this video, it's all dry now. And what I'm doing now here is I am taking um, globs of the silicone on the and just putting it on the inside where that door hinge is and just completely covering up that crack like all the way across with um, globs of silicone. I just found, finally found that it was easier to just like, you know, do it with my fingers then with the um, spout, so I'm just like taking glob after glob and just putting it all along that gap um, on the inside there. So now I'm taking the silicone on the front of the door gap where that hinge is and I'm just filling up uh, that gap from the front of the enclosure as well all along the front more silicone just like just really get it all in there make sure it's um totally filled in on both the front and the back and here i've i've already pre-measured two strips of um two strips of that mesh and I just stuck it to the front like you know put it like all in that um in that silicone and covered up the gap even further and it's and it's partly you know this is like permanent this is permanently keeping this door in place but the silicone plus that mesh it's at least offering enough flexibility so that um even though it's not like hinged as freely and flexible as it was before it's still free enough and flexible enough so that you can open it enough to get you know prey and and um decoration and whatever you want to put in and out of there and then we're just going to let this dry for a day before we go to the next part just like we have before Okay, and so since this is what it looks like, and it is now dry, it's been like two days, and it's dry. But since I closed that gap, what happens is that it means that this can't, um, this can't raise up. It can no longer raise up and, you know, open the door. I hear you cry, baby. I hear that cry, baby. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut these little things right here and so it can just be like you know an open like this all right so we're gonna need our handy dandy cutty pliery things i still don't know what these damn things are called and we're just gonna go cut cut right there there we go cutting it 
Can I do that over here on this side as well? So after cutting them, that's what that looks like on that side now. And there's no gap. I've literally just um, cut that piece in the front off. And this is what this looks like on this side. We've got the um, silicone at the back of it that blocks that gap there. And then the front, I've just cut that thing off. And so like opening it, you've got to kind of um, move this so it's not as op easy to open. Okay, so what that looks like for over here is pulling that out like that this and it's not going to open as fully it opens enough you know so that you can put whatever you need to put in there but it's so still got like some measure of flexibility that you can open it like this and then you just um you know put the top back in like this and pop that back over like that so it's not as easy open as it was but it's removed all the gapping no gap there anymore um, no side gapping right there anymore no side gapping right there anymore the vent holes are covered with double mesh vent holes covered with double mesh and so this is what you got and this is now a safe gap free sling proof enclosure and you can even still um you know close the top this is still functional oh I turned that thing around it fell off and I made it put it on the wrong way and so that part is still functional right there and so at this point this is the only way that I would feel safe using this Zilla micro habitat I hope this has been helpful for you and you can find us over on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash jumping spiders USA. And we'll see you over there.